everybody and welcome to Good News News. My name is Tapio Mshoshri and boy, do we have a show for you. Here we are, our very first show. Now, normally on a show like this, we would have a live studio audience, but there's this thing going around, I'm not sure whether you're aware of it, called coronavirus that has made having an audience pretty tricky. But have no fear, GNN is here because thanks to technology, I can give you the audience feel with a touch of a button. Right, audience? <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe that's not the same, but the show must go on as they say, so, how about some news? In Haiti, there was an unfortunate incident where four church members were kidnapped during a worship session that was being streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. Now, I must warn you, viewer discretion is advised. Wow, that is scary. But the good news in all of this is that the story has a happy ending as sources have told us that the victims have been found and released and they're physically unharmed. And it must have honestly sucked for the kidnappers who literally walked into a live stream with cameras on and literally thousands of eyes on them. Plus, it's not like they could erase the footage because it's going onto the internet. And you know what they say, once online, always online. Isn't that right, 15-year-old me? Yeah, those are some tough times. And another thing that the kidnapper probably didn't take into consideration was the courage of the members. I mean, if you saw the video, the kidnapper was kidnapping and the people were singing and playing. I mean, that alone, that should get them an extra star on their crown in heaven, or at least a room in their mansion. But in all seriousness, though, we thank God for their quick and safe return. The situation could have been a lot, lot worse. And it's things like this that remind us that the devil is hard at work, and it also reminds us that we have a lot of work to do. In Zambia, a group of Dorcas ladies took praise and worship to another level. Please take a look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's incredible. And you know what? I am 100% for it. I mean, did you see the lady who was in the tree? And you know what? This, this explains a lot. Because growing up when I was younger, I always used to wonder how my mother was so fit that she could catch me when I was trying to run away. Well, now I have the answer. Do you know how fit you must be to be climbing trees and singing at the same time? Okay, growing up, we sang songs about Zacchaeus, and this right here, this is it. This was climbing the trees, not actually climbing a tree. Imagine, imagine if they were singing about Noah building an ark. But honestly, I love this story. And it not only puts a smile on my face, but it also helps me know how I can get my summer body ready. Keep it up, ladies. And speaking of inspirational ladies, our next story is from Zimbabwe, where we look at how an amazing woman turned pain into passion. Meet Mrs. Nguenya, an evangelist who, after losing her husband in 2013, made a conscious decision to minister to those who found themselves in the same situation. Greetings, dear friends. My name is Maureen Nguenya. I come from Marare, Zimbabwe. And um, I'm a mother of four beautiful girls. 
which I have been parenting alone since 2013 when my husband of 24 years died suddenly. Mrs. Ngwenya, an Adventist widow, lost her husband in 2013. Through her pain and lessons, she is now an evangelist who is creating widow support groups to give widows strength during such difficult times, reminding them that God will never leave or forsake us, even in difficult moments. Okay, this blew my mind. Because here we have a lady who lost her husband. And instead of saying, you know what, forget everything and closing herself off from others and from God, she does something positive with her situation. Whilst, on the other hand, I found myself being petty with God over the smallest things. Traffic again? Ah! Look. I'm not saying that it's easy to go through something tough and not be frustrated or sad. In fact, I'm not even saying that it's wrong to be frustrated or sad. But what I am saying is that God can use the hardships in our lives to minister. And she allowed God to do that through her. And another thing that I learned is that we can also use our past experiences to encourage others. Through support groups and sharing of her story on various platforms, Ms. Nguenya gives hope to many who may be in dire situations and may need moral and spiritual support. And for that, Ms. Nguenya, here at GNN, we salute you. Taking a little break from the news to introduce you to a segment called Travel What What? Now, unless you're living under a rock, you are very familiar with the COVID situation. Now, many people have been locked indoors, and for the better part of a year, if you are like me, you are sick and tired of seeing your four walls. This is where GNN comes in. One of the most amazing things about living in the southern parts of Africa is that we are not only surrounded by diversity culturally, but also in our surroundings. Join us this week as we take a trip to beautiful Rodrigues for this week's segment of Travel What What? Travel What What? 560 kilometers away from Mauritius, Rodrigues, the COVID-free island country, is rich with extensive limestone deposit and cave. Composed of hilly landscape with flora and fauna, giant tortoise and several bird species. Craftsmanship, the well-preserved tradition throughout generations, can be found along the street with some culinary delicacies. Rodrigue's people are very sympathetic and charming. The Adventist message was introduced to the Rodrigans approximately a hundred years ago. The three main churches are Le Firm, Port Mothurin, and Ans Belen. Rodrigans' community are extremely thankful to God for their country has been spared from the pandemic attack. They have their praises without any restriction compared to other countries. The activities can run normally. The kids have their chance to present their program. The women department is also at work. Young hearts are sealed with God through baptism by District Pastor Julian Coralie. Video conferencing is not the trend. Being COVID free, lockdown does not form part of their daily living. The first Master Guide Award ceremony was five years back. Pathfinders Ministry is doing their best to keep the youth busy while waiting for the Savior's second return. All 
right, welcome back to GNN. If you are watching us, that means we have not been canceled yet, and that is cause for celebration. <laughs> and up next, we have a guest on the show. Oh yeah, GNN has guests. Now, our guest is the youth director from the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. So please give it up for Pastor Wusi Kumare. <laughs> Woo! Pastor, hello. How are you? I'm okay, New Tapiwa. I am good, thank you. Welcome to GNN. And first of all, I absolutely love your shirt. <laughs> it is everything to me. I also, I also like the name of your show, GNN. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all, all the good news. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah but um, I had a, a quick question because there's something that I found out before we get into the actual questions. I found out that Kumalos are royalty. Now, is this true? Very true. <laughs> So, so should I say king, pastor, pastor, king, prince? <laughs> I don't know. It. Where, where would I go with, with well, this? Just pastor? If we go humanistic, yes, I am. Uh. I am, uh, you know, belonging to the, to the royal family. But when you come to Christianity, uh -huh. the ground is level because we believe in the priesthood of all believers. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. Now to the questions. There is... Something amazing that I heard, and I would want you to please tell us a little bit more about this. There is a story about baptism that happened in Zambia. Can you please, it blew my mind, the numbers that I was hearing. So can you please talk, talk about that for a little bit? Yes, um, we normally have Global Youth Day annually. And uh, the uh -huh. Global Youth Day is usually followed by the Youth Week of Prayer. And then the last Sabbath of the Youth Week of Prayer, we call it the Homecoming Sabbath. Now, all our unions in this division participate in those three events back to back, powerful events. And so in Zambia, we were astounded to learn of a massive um, a reaping campaign which they experienced because of Global Youth Day, Youth Week of Prayer, and the Homecoming Sabbath. In a Lusaka conference in Zambia, they had baptisms on the homecoming Sabbath exceeding 1,900. And then, wow. and then, as we were shocked by that, we then learned uh. of we then learned of a staggering number of young people who had been baptized in the Northern Zambia Union, and that number exceeds twelve thousand. Now, I, at first, I did not believe this, so I had to contact my counterparts, pas, uh, counterparts Pastor Silungwe, who is in the Southern Zambia Union, and Pastor Bertin Monga, who is in the Northern Zambia Union. I said, guys, is this fake news or what? We are tired of conspiracy <laughs> theories. Can you, tell me, can you tell me if what I'm hearing is true? I mean, Southern mm. Zambia, they have exceeded over 3,000 baptisms if you include the Lusaka Conference alone, which is 1,900. And then the Northern Zambia Union, they have gone beyond 12,000. I said, is this true? They did verify the news and they sent me the, the, you know, the stories and the, and, the, and, the, and the photos. And I can verify, I can attest to the fact that it is legit. They, it's not a fake news. Wow. So God has worked wonders in Zambia where we've seen young people participating uh, in God's work and leaders running behind them, pushing them uh, and, and making them, you know, proactive for Jesus. Wow. Um, yeah, that, that, those numbers are mind-blowing and it's, and it's amazing um, because in a time like this where, you know, you have the pandemic that is, you know, just global, people have lost yes. hope. You know, um, so just kind of on that note and, and also looking at this story as well, what other kind of um, encouragement would you be able to give people that are seeing, you know, the pandemic, everyone is locked in, you know, they might be thinking that the ministry is starting to slow down. Uh, what words of encouragement would you would you have uh, for them? Um, Tapiwa, as you know, Adventist Youth Ministries is a ministry that has a lot of outdoor activities outreach programs. We are people who are always out there. We are not used to be confined in one area. And so when the pandemic hit us in South Africa and the entire world, 
we were we were dumbfounded. We didn't know how we were going to carry out youth ministries as usual. How are we going to do campaign? Right. How are we going to do global youth day where we have to knock on people's doors? How are we going to do all these right. things? But our Heavenly Father, as Ellen White says, has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. And he proved it yes, once sir. again this time. Because even in the midst of a pandemic, we've seen young people, uh, you know, doing lots more for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Young people exerting themselves. Young people proving that there is nothing, there is nothing that can stand before us. God with us, we are a formidable force. And so I can say to you that indeed, as we look at what has happened, we can actually believe more in the Bible that our Heavenly Father is always there. Just like he said to Moses, move forward as they were facing the Red Sea and the mountains will be, be behind them. Yo, I think, I think that deserves a round of applause. So there you go. And now before, before, uh, before you leave, um, I know you're the youth director at the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division and the things that are happening, um, would you please be able to tell us what is going on and the future plans on, 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 on that department? Uh, Tapiwa, Adventist Youth Ministries is quite a vast department. We have four ministries under one department, adventurers, pathfinders, ambassadors, and young adults. And so uh -huh. you can imagine each of these four levels of youth ministries is packed with programs. It's packed with mm. activities that young people can, you know, uh, participate in. Um, we have a curriculum for the whole year from January to, to February. Young people have to do progressive classes. That's the usual stuff. People know that. We grew up doing that. I'm the product of such pro programs. But in the SID Tapiwa, we took it a step further. We said, if the Pathfinder Club is so exciting and it groomed us, we are what we are because of it. We then decided to challenge our um, churches and our conferences to embark on what we call Community Pathfinder Clubs, CPCs. And we see a plethora of these CPCs advancing and expanding in our division. So we're encouraging our young people to, 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 to establish Pathfinder Clubs in the community. And I'm getting reports, exciting reports, of young people who have left drugs, who have left illicit behavior because oh, yeah. of the Pathfinder Club. But we also have other programs. One year in mission. We say to our young people, please dedicate just one year of your time. Take a gap year after high school. Take a gap year after your degree. And dedicate one year to the mission of the church. We have another program, the Caleb Project. We say go out just like Caleb and, 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 and Joshua who said, give me this mountain. When others were afraid, we are saying to our young people, be more than Caleb's. We, we have a, a, you know, a number of other programs that we can promote. But you know what we are saying is, what is the most important thing is, is for our young people to be involved in the mission of the church. And our mission mm. statement, our mission statement says it all. To lead young people in a saving relationship with Jesus and help them embrace his call to discipleship. So we are about that, oh. salvation and discipleship. All the programming, all the activities in youth ministries are about that. We are not about entertainment. We want our young people to be involved. We prepare them to be useful citizens of this world and the world to come. Oh, that is powerful, powerful stuff, Pastor. And and for someone who is trying to get, because you said there's a lot of uh, um, other things, and 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 you've mentioned quite a bit. If someone wants to uh, find out more about that, is there a website or is there somewhere that they can go to to find out, or maybe a phone number or something that they can do to to find out more? Yes, we have a, a Facebook page, SID Adventist Youth Ministries. We load our stuff there, and we have WhatsApp groups that we have formed. And if you want to really, really reach our office, I would advise you to write uh, an email to this email address, youthsec at sid.adventist.org. That email will reach us and we will certainly respond to that email because we are efficient when it comes to communicating with our young people. Yes, sir. Oh, I like that. Thank you very much for joining us on GNN. For all those who are watching, you heard where he said you can go. And uh, Pastor, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you, Tapiwa, and thank you for having me. Thank you. God bless.
Well, there you have it. That's about all the time that we have here on GNN. But thank you for watching. For more stories about what is going on, you can visit echo.sid.adventist.org. And if you have stories that you'd want to share with us, you could do so on the email below. For Good News News, I'm Tapiwa Mushoshi saying, what am I saying? You, you know what? You know what? I'll find out exactly what I'm saying. But for now, I'm just going to say goodbye. <laughs>